All right, guys, you stay here while I go talk to Izzy's, see if there's a spell that can turn you back to normal. Um, I'm pretty sure it's... No, 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 do not say that. Do you want to get demonetized? That's how you get demonetized. I'm just going to go talk to her, see if there's a spell that'll turn you back. Uh, your film screen's right here. Go make a video or something. Uh, yeah, see you in a bit. Um, okay then. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Monsters of the Mind, I guess. Um... As you can see, uh, we're in a bit of a predicament right now. This is probably very confusing if you didn't watch the last episode, but hey, that's your fault, isn't it? Anyway, uh, we're in the middle of a large... Actually, I have no idea where we are. But today, we're talking about an Egyptian god known as Anubis. Anubis means royal child, and like basically every god, he was an individual. He was pretty neutral, he lived in the Egyptian underworld, and he comes from Egyptian mythology. Like most Egyptian gods, Anubis was a humanoid with the head of an animal. In this case, he had the head of a black jackal. I don't know why Egyptians were so obsessed with giving their gods animal heads, but uh, that's just how it was. Anubis was the son of the goddess Nephthys and the god Set, aka the god who no one can figure out what he's supposed to be. Anubis' main role is pretty simple. When you died, you went to him, and then you would give him your heart. He would then put it on a scale against this thing called the Feather of Truth, and if your heart was lighter than the feather, you'd be allowed into the afterlife. But if your heart was heavier than the feather, you'd be fed to a being known as Amit, who was a hybrid between a crocodile, hippo, and lion, who would devour your soul. Interestingly enough though, despite being the most famous Egyptian god, he barely appeared in any stories. In fact, he was a pretty minor character, all things considered, in the Pantheon. So, the fact that he became the most famous Egyptian god is likely a result of the fact that, while he wasn't important to other gods, he was a pretty important figure in everyday life, as well as the fact that since a lot of pyramids were decorated with his likeness, uh, he became a very uh, noticeable figure. That's my theory as to why he became the most famous anyway. Oh, also, despite what modern media said, Anubis was not evil. I don't know why death gods are always portrayed as evil beings, but Anubis was not evil. Normally this is where we would let Vincent talk, but he's not here, so let's just move on to the card. You know, I actually find it weird they gave Anubis a card. I could understand Sekhmet since she nearly caused the apocalypse, but... What exactly did Anubis do to be labeled worthy of being monstrous? I don't know. But besides that grip, uh, there's only one real error on this card. In that, it refers to Amit as a demon, even though Amit was often considered to be a god. But that's a real small error, and it's not even about Anubis, so 9.5 out of 10 for this card. Now, normally we would look at pop culture right now, but unfortunately we're kind of a uh, cookie, so we didn't have time to look up pop culture today. So, I guess that's all for this episode of Monsters of the Mind. See you guys next time when hopefully Vincent gets a spell that'll turn us back. Thanks again, Iz Iz. I'm uh, sorry you didn't have a spell to turn him back right away, but thanks for this uh, list of ingredients that'll turn him back. And once again, I am super sorry about what happened to your name. So, thanks and goodbye.